Hi, I'm Lasse Clausen with Tech Berlin, and I'm here with Ralph Simon from Mobilium. Welcome, Simon. Thank you very much. Good to be in Berlin. Right. We're glad to have you here because you are almost a, a figure of historic importance to the mobile industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd love you to just share with us sort of your background, all the things you've done um, briefly, because there are a lot. So if you, know, if you were to quote everything that you've actually contributed to the mobile industry, it'd probably be two hours. But yeah, it'd be great to hear from you um, all the things you've done so far. I'll go right to the very beginning. I was born at an early age. I was so shocked, I cried like a baby. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> um, uh, I've been involved in mobile for some years now, and uh, it started out partly by accident, where um, I was living in Santa Monica in California at a time when uh, Napster had just started, and it was clear to me that the music business, in which I had quite a long background, uh, having a record company and a music publishing company and being involved in developing artists and producers and music was changing. Uh, and I'd always been observing uh, uh, Japan and Korea because they were the most uh, connected countries in the world, even at that time, some 15, 17 years ago. And um, uh, I uh, 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 was involved in a startup in Santa Monica that had developed some technology that ultimately became useful as a transport mechanism for sending music and images across what was then the emerging mobile phone world. And that led to an involvement in mobile. I started doing quite a lot of work with people in Helsinki, in Finland, because at that time Finland was quite dominant in uh, European mobile development. And it kind of uh, developed from there where we were lucky. We just happened to be in the right time and the right place to create the first commercial ringtone music service um, outside of Korea. And that really led to uh, people saying, well, these guys were the fathers of the ringtone. We were maybe not the fathers, but we were the cousins of the father of the ringtone. Very interesting. And uh, so you, original background music, then you yeah. went into, into mobile music, you could almost say. Correct. Someone became the cousin of the father of the mobile ringtone. Right. And uh, what have you been up to since? Well, um, certainly over the last uh, couple of years, my, uh, I've been quite active looking, going around the world on a relentless search for what's coming next. Because I'm finding that in terms of innovation and incubation of new ideas, um, it's surprising to see where new ideas come from. I've always been a great believer in Berlin for a variety of reasons. First of all, because it's an open society that really allows for innovation uh, and uh, interesting thinking and interesting creativity, because I'm a great believer in the fact that it's the creative industries that are really going to lead what happens in the 21st century. So as an example, mobile money, which is now a very important uh, factor in the new iPhone 6, was actually started 12 years ago in Kenya, in Nairobi. Kenya, East Africa, who would have thought that when you see the chairman, uh, the president of uh, Apple talking about Apple money, really it's using the basis of what really was started in Nairobi some 12 years ago, uh, something called M Pesa. Pesa is the Swahili for money. So that's one of the reasons that I try and look internationally to find interesting, cool stuff. So to answer your question, uh, without much more diversion. Um, I'm involved in um, uh, mobile music and um, mobile games. We've just uh, released a game. Um, we felt that there's a big audience, nearly a billion people playing chess, but there's very few people where their dogs play chess. So we came up with a game called Doggy Chess, where dogs play each other chess. And that we've just released as a mobile game, which is actually proving to be off to quite a good start. We're also involved in uh, mobile Bollywood. Bollywood's a very big form of entertainment, particularly India and 45 countries from India to which it is exported. And then uh, about nine months ago, we launched what is the first ever Pan-African mobile health delivery network. Health and healthcare and wellness is now being transmitted to people and usable by people for diagnosing diabetes, diagnosing HIV AIDS, uh, and a whole range of services that help new mothers and pregnant women. 
I think um, I've been able to read up on that. It's called the Smart Health Hub. Exactly. And, and it's also in collaboration with Samsung. I think they're, uh, all, they're helping was, you. It okay. was. We, we decided not to continue with Samsung for a variety of reasons. But uh, we are actually linked into the biggest telco operator in Africa and uh, working together with uh, uh, special mandates from the World Health Organization to try and get community health workers to use their mobile phones so the data can be loaded up to the cloud and in doing so create a much better kind of data pathway for treating patients in emerging countries. So that seems to be the second um, theme or innovation you mentioned actually coming out of Africa and then sometime later being adopted by Apple because you know health uh, and the health kit is a big but new initiative uh, on, on iOS 8. Um, is, is there sort of a theme that you, why would you think that these very important and very in innovative things come out of, you know, come out of Africa and actually not out of Silicon Valley, where well, Silicon well, Valley seems to be just adopting something that, you know, was started? No, well, the truth is that health really, uh, and mobile health has been in Silicon Valley for a very long time. Stanford University has pioneered some terrific stuff. In fact, uh, the Singularity University in Northern California has, uh, has got uh, a special division that deals with exponential medicine, run by probably the best exponential medicine specialist in the world, Dr. Daniel Kraft. But the area where a lot of mobile health is really pioneered is in San Diego. There's a biotech corridor in San Diego, and probably the greatest exponent of all things to do with mobile health is a well-known doctor called Dr. Eric Topol. He's just published a fantastic book called The Patient Will See You Now, which is basically the patient directed to the doctor. So uh, mobile health really, uh, its genesis was largely in North America, but um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, Africa, Africa tends to be a follower in that regard. Um, and of course, there's quite a lot of development on uh, mobile health in Germany, in uh, certainly Deutsche Telekom have got a whole practice devoted to that um, and uh, it's picking up because the whole area of personal telemetry measuring your body which is also now in evidence with wearable clothing Fitbit that kind of thing people want to be able to determine what their health is and we always joke in our company because we say we have to try and convince people that they have to live for at least 1200 months if we could live for 1,200 months, we would have an interesting life. 100 years, not bad. Um, do you see sort of some theme also in relation to Berlin? You mentioned it as, um, you know, as an interesting place you look for where interesting or innovative things come out of. Um, is, would you, is there a sort of an appeal for Berlin? Do you think Berlin is actually doing enough? Are we being radical enough uh, in terms of really crazy new ideas or has Berlin already grown up a little bit too much? You know, some people say to me that uh, relative to the other great incubation cities in the world, um, that Berlin sometimes uh, is not daring enough, not provocative enough, has a little bit of an inferiority complex where things stay on in Berlin, yet you speak to the founder of SoundCloud, uh, Alex Jung, he's based here in Berlin, does great work here. There are a number of other really interesting companies doing really well in Berlin. And in fact, uh, some people say that there are certain rules for having a great incubation city. Number one, you have to have great universities providing mathematical talent. Number two, you need to have a good funding or VC or money that can be, uh, um, th that developing companies can get. And there is, that's certainly grown a lot in Berlin. Uh, number three, you need to have relatively free movement of international talent who can get visas to come into a place. Uh, number four, you need to have uh, good coding uh, um, resources of people who can do that, and the universities do provide that. And number five, you need to have a really good DJ scene because geeks and people that are involved in coding have got to go and enjoy themselves, and Berlin is incredible from that point of view. Uh, I know there's a fantastic DJ blogger here in Berlin by the name of Jonty Scruff. Have you ever heard of Jonty? Not yet, but I'm going to look him up now. Yes. Jonty is great. 
John T is someone that really understands exactly where all the bodies are buried and where the future bodies are going to be buried in terms of DJ culture. So Berlin has always had those key attributes. Uh, I think that um, it needs to be even more provocative because as we are moving into this next phase of 2016, 2017, um, it's going to be those unusual provocative ideas that uh, uh, are going to produce interesting new ideas in wearables, interesting new ideas in nanotechnology that manifests itself in mobile everything. Ralph Simon from Mobilium, thank you so much for coming to us. Thank you.